Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Griffin, and you are watching another Deck Tech brought to you by the Command Valley Podcast. Today, we will be covering Kels Fight Fixer from the Supplemental Jumpstart set. Before we begin, I just wanted to remind you guys to please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel if you like our content, help us continue to grow, and we appreciate all of you who support us. Another reminder that this episode and this podcast is brought to you by Game Grid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, go ahead and check them out. We love them and uh, hopefully they love us. All right then, let's begin. Kels Fight Fixer is two black black for a 4-3 legendary creature, Azra Warlock. She has menace and reads, whenever you sacrifice a creature, you may pay blue or black hybrid. If you do, draw a card. And for one generic sacrifice a creature, Kels Fight Fixer gains indestructible until end of turn. So we already know that aristocrat strategies are very powerful, and it's really interesting to see a aristocrat strategy in a Demir commander. Now the thing I love about Kels the most, and this is actually something I love about commanders in general, if, if a commander has this, it's automatically up on my top tier, is they have an effect, and they also provide a way for you to be able to get that effect. Kels allows you to draw cards off of sacrificing creatures by paying blue or black, but also has a way of sacrificing creatures herself. So she is an engine all on her own, and there is no way this deck won't be good. Let's first talk about the way that we're going to win with Kels. Since we're playing Aristocrats, we're obviously going to be playing the Aristocrats Life Drain, since we're sacrificing a lot of creatures. And we're also going to be playing another combo in this deck, essentially the Nim Death Mantle Ashnod's Altar combo. If you don't know what this combo is, I will go into it a little bit later in this video. But just know those are going to be the two ways that we're going to be able to win with this deck. So most of our cards are going to rotate around those two strategies. So first off, let's talk about Aristocrats. When building this deck, the first thing I wanted to find is creatures that create more than just themselves. So such as things that create tokens or things that bring things back from the graveyard to the battlefield. That way we're netting ourselves when we're sacrificing creatures with Kels or any one of our other sacrificing outlets. To start us off, we have Blood Gas, which is black black for a 2-1 vampire spirit. And the important thing is that it has landfall. So whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Blood Gas from your graveyard to the battlefield. So we can use Kels, sacrifice the Blood Gas, gain a card, and then the next turn when we play land, we get him back. Chasm Skulker, one of my favorite cards in this deck, is two and a blue for a 1-1 one, one creature squid horror. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter in Chasm Skulker. And when Chasm Skulker dies, put X 1-1 one, one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk onto the battlefield where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Chasm Skulker. So with the amount of cards that we're going to be able to draw, it's not unreasonable to assume that we can get Chasm Skulker to a 10-10, maybe wait for somebody to try to remove it and then sacrifice it and get 10 1-1 one, one, squids onto the battlefield and those are perfect to sacrifice to Kels' ability. Nadir Kraken, one blue blue for a two three Kraken. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one generic. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on Nadir Kraken and create a one one blue tentacle creature token. So Nadir Kraken with Kels is really nice because you can just basically pay the mana to cycle through cards. So the way that you would do this is that you have Nadir Kraken, you have Kels on the battlefield. Let's say your turn, you draw a card, you pay one, you create a blue tentacle creature token. You then play one generic from Kels to sacrifice the blue tentacle creature tokens and you pay another black or then pay another black or blue to draw a card off of Kels's ability to trigger an deer Kraken to pay one more mana to create another one one blue tentacle creature token. Now that is a lot of mana to just get a couple of cards and a couple of tokens but it is an effective engine if you need some cards. Ophiomancer two and a black for a two two at the beginning of each upkeep if you control no snakes put a one one black snake creature token with death touch onto the battlefield. So I just wanted to know you can see Kels is essentially pay two mana, draw a card. Especially with cards like Ophiomancer, where we're just creating tokens every single turn and sacrificing them to draw cards. Pawn of Ulamog, one black black for a 2-2. When it or another non-token creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may put a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacrifices creature, add one generic mana to your mana pool. Weapon Craft Enthusiast, two to black for a 0-1 with Fabricate 2. You can choose to put two plus one plus one counters on it, or you can choose to make two 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature tokens when it enters, which is amazing. If what we're really looking for is those kind of rates where we pay three mana to get three creatures. That is three creatures that we can sacrifice with Kels and just keep that keep this draw engine going. I think you see where we're going here. Or a thief. A personal favorite of mine, a three and a blue for a two, two illusion. When Aura Thief is put into a graveyard from play, you gain control of all enchantments. Now this is really great because since we're in Demir, we don't have a lot of responses to enchantments. In fact, enchantments the least. So having Aura Thief to be able to steal those pesky enchantments that are maybe halting us, especially since we can reasonably assume that we're gonna be able to sacrifice Aura Thief as soon as it comes out. 
Chittering Witches, three and a black for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 one, one black rat creature tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. So in Commander, that would be three. You can also pay one to black to sacrifice a creature. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. So it has that sacrifice outlet on it to give something minus two, minus two, but we can also just use Kels or one of our other free sacrifice outlets that we will be getting to in a second. Marsh Flitter for three and a black. We have a one, one fairy rogue. When it comes into play, put two, one, one block goblin road creature tokens into play. You can also sacrifice a goblin. Marsh Flitter becomes a three, three until end of turn. Four mana for three bodies. Very good rate. Reef Worm for a three and a blue, we have a zero one worm. And when Reef Worm dies, you create a three three blue fish creature token onto the battlefield with when this creature dies, put a six six blue whale creature token onto the battlefield with when this creature dies, put a nine nine blue kraken creature token onto the battlefield. So for four mana, we get a zero one that can turn into a three three, which turns into a six six, which turns into a nine nine. Generally, we're just going to be sacrificing this, but if you just want to leave that nine nine out because it's a nine nine, that just shows how useful this card is. Sing your autocrat for three and a black. We have a two, two. When it comes into play, put three surf tokens into play. Treat these tokens as zero, one black creatures. If singer autocrats leaves play, bury all surf tokens. Next up, we have sifter of skulls, which is three and a black for a four, three Eldrazi. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a one, one colorless Eldrazi cyan creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacrificed this creature at colorless to your mana pool. Slingang Lieutenant is three and a black for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens, and you can sacrifice a goblin. Target player loses one life, and you gain one life. And lastly, we have Grave Titan, which is four black black for a 6-6 six, six giant with death touch. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, put two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. So those are going to be all the creatures that we have that create tokens, but we also have a couple of enchantments that can do the same thing. We have Bitter Blossom for one and a black. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and you put a 1-1 black fairy rogue creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Also have Dread Horde Invasion, which is one in a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and amass one. Whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink until end of turn. All right, so now that we've gone over the ways of being able to create tokens in our deck, let's talk about the ways that we can abuse and use those tokens to really get us ahead. So first off, let's cover the non kels sacrifice outlets in this deck, because obviously we want some redundancy, so we don't want Kels to be the only thing that sacrifices creatures, especially because you have to pay a generic to sacrifice a creature. Although that isn't a lot, we'd rather have things that we can sacrifice for free. So for instance, we have Carrion Feeder, which is one block for a 1-1. One, one. It can't block, but you can sacrifice a creature to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Viserys here, one block for a 1-1 one, one to sack a creature to scry one. Priest of Forgotten Gods, one and a black for a 1-2. You can tap it to sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life. And sacrifice a creature, you add two black mana and you draw a card. Super great with Kels out because you're sacrificing two creatures and it gives you the mana to pay for Kels' ability to draw two cards. Along with the extra card that you're drawing off of Priest of Forgotten Gods. Woe Strider for two and a black. We have a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat creature token. You can sacrifice another creature to scry one. And it also has escape for three black black. Yeheni Undying Partisan for two and a black. We have a 2-2 two, two. legendary creature with haste. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Yeheni Undying Partisan. And sacrifice another creature, Yeheni gains indestructible until end of turn. Then of course we also have Ashnalt's Altar, which is a three mana artifact that reads sacrifice a creature, add two colorless to your mana pool. So those are very important to this deck. We only need one other sacrifice out, out on the battlefield. So you don't want to cast all of these at the same time. Maybe you want to keep one in your hand to cast if your other one gets removed. But it's nice to have that redundant effect and be able to sacrifice creatures for free. So let's talk about the payoffs. What are we going to get from sacrificing creatures in addition to drawing cards off of Kels? Of course, we have the typical draining, such as Blood Artist, Zulaport Cutthroat, Vindictive Vampire, and Falcon Wrath Noble, which drains our opponents when we sacrifice creatures. Grim Horror Specs and Midnight Reaper, which gives us cards when our creatures die. Pitiless Plunderer, for three and black, a one, four. Whenever another creature you control dies, create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap to sacrifice and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Smothering Abomination for two black black. We have a four, three Eldrazi. Devoid and flying at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. We also have Liliana, Dreadhorde General, which gives us, number one, a static ability that allows us to draw cards when our creatures die, an ability to make tokens, and also an ability to cause each player to sacrifice two creatures, activating Kels' 
ability to draw cards, it's just a really good card. We also have Liliana Standard Bearer, which isn't necessarily a sacrifice payoff, but it can be. It's two and a black for a 3-1 with flash. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. This is really nice for things like board wipes. Uh, maybe if tons of your creatures got removed, if somebody played a massacre worm that just wiped out a ton of your tokens, or even if you just uses Kels' ability a couple times to sacrifice three, maybe four creatures and cast a lily on a standard bearer to draw four cards. Other payoffs, of course, we have Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos. Both of these read, when another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. This essentially will just halt everybody else's board because we are going to be sacrificing creatures repetitively over and over. It's going to be very hard for a creature to stay on the battlefield. Black Market, for three black black we have an enchantment. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, put a charge counter on Black Market. The beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on Black Market. Now this doesn't include just your creatures and it doesn't say non-token creatures, it just says creatures that enter the graveyard and tokens do enter the graveyard before disappearing so they do activate black market. So now we've covered basically the strategy in our deck, let's talk about the win conditions. For the first one, our aristocrats, it's the same old, same old aristocrat strategy where we have the blood altarist, falcon wrath noble, zealport cutthroat, we're just sacrificing creatures repetitively, drawing cards and draining our opponents. The second one is going to be with nim death mantle. Nim Death Mantle is a 2 mana artifact, equipment, equipped creature gets plus 2 plus 2, has intimidate, and is a black zombie. It also reads whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay 4. If you do, return that card to the battlefield and attach Nim Death Mantle to it, and you can equip for 4. So the way that this combo works is you need a Nim Death Mantle, something that creates 2 tokens when it comes in, such as Sengir Autocrats, and you also need the Ashnod's Altar out onto the battlefield as well. So the way that this combo works with Kels is you cast these Sengir Autocrats, or you have the Sengir Autocrats, you cast the Nim Death Mantle. You use Ashnod's Altar to sacrifice all four of your tokens that you've just made with Sengir Autocrats. So you, you sacrifice all the tokens, then you sacrifice the Sengir Autocrats. You have eight colorless mana in your mana pool. You're going to use four of that mana to activate the Nim Death Mantle, bringing back the Sengir Autocrats to the battlefield, which will create three more tokens with it. Now when this happens, Blood Artist, or one of our draining effects, will see all four of those creatures die and drain our opponents for four. Then you have, since you have four colorless floating in your mana pool, you can just repeat this process over and over again until you've drained your opponents out. Now this works with so many of our token makers and it's very easy to get this. And there, there are ways that we can tutor them up, such as we have Sidisi Undead Vizier, which also works with our sacrificing strategy because it exploits to tutor a card. We have Tribute Mage and Trophy Mage that can find us the Nim Death Mantle and the Ashnod's Altar. Then we also have a Grim Tutor in this deck to find any one of those combo pieces. But for the most part, you're just going to be having fun using the Aristocrat strategy to drain your opponents out. But before we end the deck tech, I quickly want to talk about both the cards draw and the artifact ramp. Since we are in Demir, we don't have a ton of ramp available to us that isn't artifact ramp. So we have Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bauble. Charcoal Diamond, Demir Signet, Mind Stone, Sky Diamond, Commander's Fear, Worn Power Stone, and a Hedron Archive. We also have Pitiless Plunder and the Pawn of Ulamog style cards which create mana when we sacrifice creatures, but we do have also a lot of other ramp in this deck to be able to really have as much mana to our disposable to draw a bunch of cards off of Kels. Now the card draw is also interesting because we have so much card draw on Kels herself and since she can give us indestructible and I don't think she's going to be really targeted because number one you can give her indestructible and number two she's not the win condition she's just the card draw engine you can reasonably assume that she can stick around but other things that we have as far as card draw goes we have a brainstorm draw three cards and put two cards back on top of your library in any order we have ponder which is one mana one blue mana look at the top three cards of your library then put them back in any order you may shuffle your library and then draw a card mystic remora which is one blue for an enchantment cumulative upkeep cost of one and whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell you may draw a card unless that player pays four and then for me again since we have so much advantage off of our commander i have chosen not to put that many card draw spells in this deck but if you would like and i haven't tested this deck out quite yet but i think it might be a good idea to put some cards like night whisper ambitions cost read the bones spells like that that can draw you some cards 
that is all I have for you for the deck tech for Kel's Fight Fixer. If, if you want to see the full deck list, there will be a link in the description below that will go over all the 100 cards that I've put into this deck. And of course, as always, if you have any recommendations or if you have any special cards that you think would fit really well into this deck, please comment them below. We love seeing your guys' ideas for these deck techs. And as always, we are a community. We're all just trying to make better decks and a better commander experience. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope you love this deck and we will see you next time on our next deck tech.